is 5-amino-1-MQ a steroid? Now, this is a great question, and what we'll do in this video is deconstruct the fact that 5-amino-1-MQ is not a steroid. Actually, it behaves more like a peptide than a steroid. It's technically a small molecule, but we'll differentiate why people assume that it's a steroid based on body composition changes, based on strength gains, athleticism, and also just overall energy expenditure and your body's ability to recover from metabolic dysfunction. Function. So by the end of this video, you're going to know exactly if this is a molecule that you want to add into your stack. And you'll also understand the inherent trade-off when you're thinking about anabolic steroids versus maybe a small molecule or a peptide. So let's dive in. I'm Reagan Archibald, founder of Ageless Future, and I make these videos because I believe in clarity when it comes to your health. You are the owner of your body and your body needs decisions and choices made that are going to lead to a better future. My job and my team's job is to help you achieve optimized health in the shortest amount of time possible. And I've seen 5-amino-1-MQ work wonders. The problem is a lot of these molecules, 5-amino-1-MQ is technically a small molecule. I've got a whole video on differentiating why it's lumped into the peptide category based on the pathways that it activates. It's a signaling molecule, which we love. You know, I think signaling medicine is the medicine of the future where we're just sending communication through the body instead of overriding it. The reason why steroids like uh, Trembolone, Anavar, Nandrolone, uh, some of these, they have some side effect profiles and they are real. And if you use too much or you abuse some of these drugs, you can have uh, irreversible consequences and side effects. But I also am like, well, I want to get the same impact. I'm just like you. I want to find out ways that I can optimize my body's health my ability to perform in the ways that I want, both cognitively and physically. I want to have a certain body composition. So what are the other options? Well, 5-amino-1-MQ, it doesn't work on any of these hormone pathways, and but it also has a little bit more of a safety profile. Some of the side effects that people have noted is 5-amino-1-MQ does increase your NAD, it works right on your body's NAD salvage pathway. So you can have almost 150 to 160% of an increase of NAD. And if you've ever had like an NAD drip or you've injected NAD and you notice you can feel a little bit of nausea, some people experience that with 5-amino-1-MQ, which is why you always wanna start on a smaller dose and then work up to like 150 milligrams. You know, start with 50, go to 100, then 150. But why do people lump it in as a steroid? Well, one of the studies that they found in this molecule is fascinating because it was uncovered out of the University of San Antonio, Texas in their biomedical department. And it's a molecule where they tested thousands of molecules that turn off a pathway called NNMT or the nicotinamide and methyltransferase. And this this pathway, when it's activated, it causes us to hold on to fat and store fat and specifically white fat. And then that changes the hormone profile in our body. White fat loves white fat and so you accumulate more. But when you block NNMT, then you can actually reverse metabolic disease. You get better muscle contractility. And this is where, you know, kind of people confuse it for being a steroid because in some of the uh, animal models, they found that animals had a 50% improvement in muscle contractility. So they were stronger, had more power and had more strength on 5-amino-1-MQ versus not being on it. The other thing they found is that obese mice, even fed the same diet, had a dramatic weight loss up to about 30% of their total body fat in a very short period of time, 10 to 30 days. Unfortunately, the mice models don't always work with humans. As you've noticed, we're a little bit different. Even the mice studies are flawed because mice aren't in their natural habitat. I mean, they're not really outrunning predators and they don't have to like forage for food, but it gives us an idea. Mice replicate pretty quickly. So and the other thing that 5-amino-1-MQ does not do that steroids would do is it doesn't bind to androgen hormones. It doesn't impact testosterone, estrogen, cortisol, DHEA, aldosterone, because all of these quote unquote steroids or hormones, they have three hexagonal rings, one pentagonal ring. They have all of these are fused 
together and all steroids are derived from cholesterol. I know it's the behemoth, like uh, you go to your doctor and the first thing they wanna to talk to you about is your cholesterol. And you feel so guilty because your cholesterol levels are like 190. <laughs> Even though your triglycerides are like 70, maybe your HDL is like 80 and your doctor still wants to get you on a statin. Frustrating, I get it because they keep lowering the bar because now we have drugs that lower cholesterol. Those drugs haven't really solved the problem with heart disease. But the cholesterol is what all these steroids are made from. 5-amino-1-MQ, it's a salt. It's a quinolinium salt. What that means is it, it methylates off of the nitrogen. It has this 5-amine group, and then it's water-soluble and has a positively charged ion. So completely different molecule, zero resemblance to steroids. So just get that out of your mind. 5-amino-1-MQ does show up on several WADA lists. So uh, we work with a lot of professional athletes, cyclists, UFC fighters, NFL, NBA, and we have to be very careful about what they can take because we don't want them to fail a test. And 5-amino-1-MQ does seem to show up. So for you athletes, you're like, Reagan, I know that's not you. I'm the professional athlete. And thank you. I know that. Someday though, I'll be like Charles Euster. Charles Euster took up sprinting in his 90s. You know, he was a retired dentist and just like got into fitness and like hired a Mr. Olympia to help him build muscle mass. But he broke like the 200 meter, the 400 meter. And, and when a reporter asked him, how does it feel to break these world records? He said, well, there's not much competition. So that will be Reagan. I'll just outlive all of you guys who are hating on me for not being a professional athlete. And uh, I'll just get old and then I uh, lose the competition. So 5-amino-1-MQ, it doesn't bind on androgen, estrogen, progesterone, or glucocorticoid receptors. It doesn't increase testosterone or DHT, but it does improve body composition. One of the biggest things that you'll see is when you block or you inhibit the NNMT pathway, you're activating the secondary energy system called AMPK. Now the fat that was sitting there kind of dormant and just trying to recruit other fat cells to come to the party, now that mitochondria, which make it the white fat because the mitochondria are concentrated in the center of the fat cell, now they're at the surface of the cell. And so you get more beige fat, which turns on this metabolic process. So you start burning fat. Literally, it creates this recomposition of fat and turns on your fatty acid oxidation utilization. But when you do that, now you block the new formation of fat cells. You also get an increase in contractility of the muscles. Several people have noted that they can run faster, they feel lighter on their feet, uh, they can jump higher. I can't promise any of these things. Actually, I can't promise anything that this will do for you, but I do see it as being a superstar when it comes to increasing mitochondrial function activating genes that turn on new mitochondrial formation. You have better energy levels. And probably the most important thing is NAD is such a powerful molecule that, you know, David Sinclair has got like 140 some odd precursors for NAD that you know he's patented. And they're trying to make a drug out of NAD because of its sirtuin activation. But the thing that makes 5-amino-1-MQ stand out is the fact that it works on your own NAD salvage pathway. And I think anything you make on your own is going to be far superior to things that come from the outside world. So 5-amino-1-MQ, yes, it's a powerful molecule. No, it's not a steroid. And if you want to go deeper to find out if this is a molecule that may be beneficial, you may want to use this in your peptide bypass protocols. All you need to do is go to agelessfuture.com, schedule your health span assessment, and I've got a phenomenal team who will take really good care of you. I appreciate you being on the channel. I'm Reagan Arshwab. Let's see you on the next video.